Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is a podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I am happy to be with you on this Tuesday for another episode. Today's episode, you see by the title, says Sweden, and I gave that very um, not so teasery teaser of the, uh, uh, that I was going to Europe at the end of last episode. Um, yeah, I... I I shouldn't be allowed to just improvise like that at the end of the podcast because that was silly. At any rate, um, Sweden. So the reason that this episode is called Sweden is because each of the books that I'm going to talk about take place in Sweden. Imagine that. This came about because I recently finished listening to the audiobook of the book A Man Called Uva by Frederick Bachman. And I don't know why I didn't hear about this book until recently. It actually came out in 2015, May 5th. Uh, the paperback came out in May 5th of 2015. Um, let's see when the hardcover came out, just to give me uh, July 15th, 2014. So this book has been out for four years already. And I, for some reason, didn't hear about it. And then all of a sudden, I was hearing about it from a variety of different places. And so I looked it up. And here's the description. Meet Uva. Before I give you the description, O V E. Uva is how the narrator of the um, the book, the audiobook, pronounces it, and it's also how the actors in the Swedish language film pronounce it. Uva. O V E. So I'm going to go with Uva. If that's not how you pronounced it when you read it, or or you haven't heard, or you've heard it pronounced some other way, I apologize. But I'm going with what I with what I've heard. So meet Uva. He's a curmudgeon. The kind of man who points at people he dislikes as if they were burglars caught outside his bedroom window. He has staunch principles, strict routines, and a short fuse. People call him the bitter neighbor from hell. But must Uva be bitter just because he doesn't want to walk around with a smile plastered to his face all the time? Behind the cranky exterior, there is a story and a sadness. So in one November morning, a chatty young couple with two chatty young daughters move in next door and accidentally flatten Uva's mailbox. It is the lead-in to a comical and heartwarming tale of unkept cats, unexpected friendship, and the ancient art of backing up a U-Haul, all of which will change one cranky old man and a local residence association to their very foundations. So that is the description of A Man Called Uva by Frederick Backman. And again, I can't remember where, I, I just kept hearing about this over the last couple of months, and so I thought I would check it out. It was very difficult at first. Um, Uva really is, I mean, it, he's a curmudgeon, yes. He's kind of a jerk. I mean, he, th this is a very good description because, yes, he has staunch principles, strict routines and a short fuse. He gets up every morning at the exact same time. He then goes on what he calls his um his rounds and he checks things out in the neighborhood and in the in the housing development or complex where he lives and he's very cranky about uh bikes that aren't where they're supposed to be and you know cars not being in the residential area and there are signs and don't you have to pay attention to the sign. Um he is very rude to people. Um, he he calls people idiots all the time because they don't do things the way he thinks that they should be done. You know, when he drives, he's definitely got road rage. He is, he's a jerk. And as I was listening to this book, I just kept reminding myself this clearly from the description of the book and from things I've heard, this does not continue for the entire book. I almost 
stop listening in the first couple of hours because I was like, I just can't listen to this guy call one more person an idiot. And maybe it's because George Newbern, the, the person who read the book, did such a great job of just channeling that idiot the way he would say it. I was like, oh, I'm so glad Uva is not my neighbor. He would just drive me crazy. But as the book goes on and he meets his new neighbors, who he calls the lanky one and the pregnant one, no, the foreign one, and she's Iranian and she's also very pregnant, but he calls, he, he doesn't really try to learn people's names. He just describes them by their appearance. And, but they, the, first of all, they run over his mailbox and he's very annoyed because they don't know how to back up a car with a U-Haul, with a trailer. Um, but then they just keep sort of insinuating themselves into his lives, into his life. And he, and we start hearing more of his backstory as the book goes on. And his backstory explains so very much of why he is how he it what how he is, which is something that I appreciate in books. When a backstory, when when that when all of that is explained, when you see a person's origin story, etc., you really understand why Uva is like he is. And then we start learning more about his wife who truly loves him even though you just keep thinking how did you live with this man for so many years and not just you know hit him over the head with a frying pan <laughs> and she you can see you start to see uva through his wife's eyes and that really helps and you start to see uva through the neighbor's eyes and you really start to get this this beautiful story and it, by the end i i didn't want it to end i was like I actually, you know, I, I'm not sure I would have ever had the patience to be like the neighbors and um, pursue friendship to the degree that the neighbors do. But by the end, I was like, oh, I want more of Uva's story. Because as the book ended, I was like, wow, that, that, wow. Um so yeah, I, st I started out not hating it, but just feeling like, oh my gosh, I can't deal with this man to, oh, wow, that was, that was, yeah, that was a really, really well done book. It is written with a lot of heart and warmth and it's funny. Um, it does take place in Sweden, although if you don't know that, there, you may not really think about it too much. You know, he talks about um, kroners. So that's, that's your first indication that the, the monetary unit is not quite right. And then he talks about, um, sobs. He always, Uva always owns a sob. And then he, he talks about foreign cars. So yes, it, sobs here are foreign cars. So, uh, yeah, it never actually says the name of the town where he lives or, or anything like that. But there are those little, little tidbits that make you re suddenly realize if you didn't already know that it was set in Sweden and now you do, because I told you, then you would be suspicious. This is, has been made into a movie, um, a Swedish language movie, and I have it. I haven't watched it yet, not because I have an issue with subtitles, but because I am so far behind on projects like crochet projects that when I take time to watch a movie, I usually like to crochet while I am watching and I can't crochet and read subtitles at the same time. I, I can crochet and not look sometimes depending on the pattern, but you, you know, you need to be able to read the subtitles. So I have not watched it yet, but it's on my list. I also heard that they are doing a, an English language version of this with Tom Hanks. Um, I believe that to be the case. And I think that is brilliant because I love Tom Hanks as an actor and I think he would be great portraying the curmudgeonliness of Uva, but also being able to portray all of the levels and the depths that are present in Uva's character, including becoming someone that you're really rooting for in the end and someone here like, okay, I, I understand you more. So I definitely think that is a good casting choice. I'm interested to see who they cast for the other roles. I think I saw that it's coming out in 2019. So if you are looking for um, a book that is a little funny, um, definitely heartwarming, this is a really good one. Um, if you're looking for, I, mean, I don't know if you're looking for a book to read, but this would be a great book to, you know, to just 
sink into. The audiobook is great. As I said, the narrator does a really good job of just portraying Uva's character so well, and um, as well as the other characters. So started out a little iffy, and then uh, maybe I had Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> Sorry, that was a really bad pun that was not intended. Um, Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yep, moving on. Maybe I did, but uh, I really just think it was Frederick Bachman's writing and the way he crafted the story and brought it around so that by the end, I wanted more of the story. We are going to take our first break of the podcast, and when we come back, we'll be talking more about books set in Sweden. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, this um, Swedish-themed book review podcast. Before the break, I was talking about A Man Called Uva by Frederick Bachman. And after I finished listening to that book on Audible, I thought, hmm, I'm sure that there are other books set in Sweden. I'm going to go and seek them out and see which ones I have read. And of course, the first one that came to mind was The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. I don't know if it's the most famous or the one that people would automatically think of, but that is certainly the one that I thought of first. That is by Stieg Larsson. It's actually um, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo is the first in a series of books. Um, it's actually called the Millennium Series, and I think that's probably because in addition to the original three, um, Stieg Larsson, the author, has actually died, but someone else has been writing the stories. So there is, um, in the original trilogy, there is The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, The Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest, and The Girl Who Played with Fire. They've all been made into movies, both um, Swedish language and English language. And now there is also um, another book called The Girl in the Spider's Web, and that is by David Lagerkrantz. I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right. That has also been made into a movie. Um, I have not read that book, but I did read the original trilogy. And for those of you who maybe haven't read them or need a refresher, the description of the first book, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, is as follows. Harriet Vanger, a scion of one of Sweden's wealthiest families, disappeared over 40 years ago. All these years later, her aged uncle continues to seek the truth. He hires Michael Blomquist, a crusading journalist recently trapped by a libel conviction, to investigate. He is aided by the pierced and tattooed punk prodigy Lisbeth Salander. Together, they tap into a vein of unfathomable iniquity and astonish astonishing corruption. That is a very sparse description of this series of this book and this series. I kind of like Uva, I had trouble with Lisbeth as a main character when I first started reading. I'd say overall, I enjoyed the trilogy. Um, it definitely kept me interested. It definitely kept me guessing. I wanted to find out what was going to happen. Lisbeth has as a as a main character was a little hard for me i think just because she has a different moral compass than i do and um so some of the the choices that she makes and the decisions that she makes well i could understand them i was like oh that is so far out of my own way of thinking uh she 
she tends to take matters into her own hand, which hands, which can be a very good quality. There's a couple of situations that she doesn't trust the authorities to handle. And so she handles them herself in ways that part of me wanted to cheer her on. And part of me was like, ah, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, I don't want to give too much away. She is, well, she's on the spectrum um, the aut the autism spectrum, and actually, I really appreciated that this was uh, a main character. She and, and Michael are, are main characters. You get the the stories from both of their their perspectives, but um, Elizabeth is definitely, you know, well, she is the girl with the dragon tattoo. So I appreciate that you get this character who is representing that that spectrum, and that. Do you see that her personality and, you know, some of her, her habits are maybe a little different than what you're used to? I really appreciate the representation there because we need to have our literature, as I've said before, be representative of more people in the world than we sometimes get. And I'm so happy that so many books are moving into more inclusive veins of representation. So it wasn't the fact that she is on the spectrum that bothered me just kind of, and, and that act, that actually goes into the decisions that she makes. So it is part of her makeup as a character, but, um, so it wasn't, it wasn't that she was on the spectrum, just, I guess it is kind of, I mean, it, it's one of those sort of catch 22 things where, you know, it is and it isn't, but I just, I had some trouble with some of the decisions that she makes and the way she interacts with the world. Sometimes it was, it was good to see the reasoning behind it and to really delve into the whys and the hows of her character. Um, but there were just a few moments when I felt I don't know if the word uncomfortable is right. It's been several years since I've read the books. So I'm trying to, to go back in my brain and, and really remember why I felt uncomfortable. And if it was the book or if it was um, where I was at in my life, because sometimes where I'm at in my life can affect how I'm reading a book. And I, I think I've talked about that before with, um, for instance, The Hunger Games. You know, if I'm in a certain place, then that affects my mood. It affects how I perceive things, etc. So I'm trying to go back and remember, was it what was happening in my own life or or not? So as I was uh, doing a little more reading on the books and some of the reviews of both the books and the movies, just trying to refresh my my memory a little bit, I came across a review of the movie in the New York Times and. It, it describes Elizabeth, Elizabeth's character so well. It describes her as tiny as a sparrow, fierce as an eagle. Um, Elizabeth Salander is one of the great Scandinavian Avengers of our time, an angry bird catapulting into the fortresses of power and wiping smiles off the faces of smug, predatory pigs. Um, it says her appeal arises from a combination of vulnerability and ruthless competence. Elizabeth can hack any machine, crack any code, and when necessary, meet out righteous punitive violence. That's, I think, the part that I had some of my, my main issues with. Not I think, that that it was the, those were the scenes that I had my main issues with. Um, but she is also a lost and abused child. So just like a man called Uva, you get this sort of edgy, confusing character, but then you're starting to find out more about how she came to be in this place in her life, what her backstory is, etc. And um, so I really appreciated, again, I really appreciated that, finding out more about her backstory and how she interacted with characters and, and watching her evolve throughout the series because she does, um, you know, she does evolve in certain ways. She, she kind of keeps that, that edginess to her, but she does evolve, which I appreciate. And overall, I, like I said, I enjoyed the book. They are the books. They're full of, they're full of action. They're full of suspense. Uh, they still have that element of characters, character, um, profile, but kind of like, a man called Uva. I I started out 
a little leery, not quite sure what I thought of Elizabeth's character. And while at the end, I didn't feel quite as attached to her as I felt to Uva at the end of his story, um, I definitely enjoyed the, the series and it's not one that I want to put on my, my list of reading every year or every few years, but I am glad that I did have the experience and went and read the trilogy. Haven't decided yet if I'm going to read the the new one, the girl with the the girl something about spiders web, the girl in the spiders web. I haven't seen any of the movies. I haven't seen either the the Swedish language or the English language movies, even though they've been on my list for a long time. Can you tell that I am even further behind on movies than I am on my to be read list? <laughs> so that is. Uh, that segment. Um, We're going to take our second break of the podcast. And when we come back, we'll be returning to Sweden for our final segment. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. So far, we've talked about A Man Called Uva and The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. And we're going to move on now. As I mentioned, I started looking for other books set in Sweden or by Swedish authors. And the first one that popped into my head before I even started looking was The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. And then uh, as I started reading through the list, I had not heard of a lot of them being that they are, um, you know, in Sweden, probably in Swedish. But the one that jumped out at me that I hadn't really thought about is Pippi Longstocking. And that is by Astrid Lindgren. I didn't realize, although if I look at the name, Astrid Lindgren sounds very Scandinavian, right? Um, So this is the description of Oh, first, I did not read Pippi Longstocking as a child. It was not one of the books that uh, either my parents read to me or I read on my own. And that might be because I saw the movie somewhere, I think at a friend's house, and didn't like it. Didn't, <laughs> didn't. Here's here's the other theme of this episode. I didn't like Pippi as a character. I don't know. I, I, am I biased? Is it because I have a Norwegian background so I can't like Swedish characters? I just don't know. I <laughs> But it was cracking me up that I was like, oh, that book's from a Swedish author. Oh, didn't really like that character. Oh, that book's from Sweden. Mm, Didn't really care for that character. Anyway, Pippi Longstocking. Uh, The description of one of the newer editions says, Since Pippi Longstocking was first published in 1950, the escapades of the incomparable Pippi, the girl with upside down braids and no parents to tell her what to do, have delighted boys and girls alike. Um, so this is the collection of Pippi Longstocking. Pippi goes on board and Pippi in the South Seas. They're all together in this. Um, and it says it's an ideal introduction for anyone discovering Pippi for the first time, which might need to be me because I have not read it. Um, Astrid Lindgren, uh, it's, I'm intrigued to know, was awarded the 1958 Hans Christian Andersen Medal for her contribution to international children's literature, which is awesome. I think part of what I had trouble with, with the movie, and again, hadn't read the books, need to actually go and read the books because the books are not the movie. As we all know, when we've read 
a book and seen a movie is that, you know, there, there's that, there's that line from the description, Pippi with no parents to tell her what to do. So she's this kind of wild, crazy, you know, she's got the iconic braids and I was a rule following little nerd of a child. I think I just was offended that she had so much freedom. I don't know. She just, she made me uncomfortable because she has two neighbors who are, um, not, I don't want to say normal children, that's not right, but have uh, what we would maybe look at as a more normal upbringing with parents and, and rules and schedules, etc. And then Pippi moves in next door and she's just this kind of crazy, freewheeling, <laughs> do what she likes uh, kid, etc. She goes on adventures. She has a horse. And um, I know people who love Pippi Longstocking. If you are one of those people and you're, uh, please don't be offended. Um, oh, the, the neighbors are Tommy and his sister, Annika. She, uh, Pippi, as we know, has crazy red pigtails, no parents to tell her what to do, a horse that lives on her porch, and a flair for the outrageous that seems to lead to one adventure after another. I think that's probably the attraction for most people is that flair for adventure. And, you know, because she has this different childhood, she doesn't have those constrictions that I would have had as a kid. I, you know, I was a rule follower. I was always afraid of getting in trouble. Didn't want to disappoint my parents, etc. Pippi doesn't have that. So while there are certainly, you know, downsides, we could name all sorts of, of downsides to potential childhood like that. Pippi has a sense of adventure that I was most definitely lacking as a child. Uh, I was adventurous in what I would read, but I wasn't terribly brave in going out and doing things. So I think that may have been the source of my uncomfortableness with Pippi. But I do need to go and actually read Pippi Longstocking for myself because I have not read it. And I would like to know more. I would like to actually read the story and see why people love Pippi Longstocking. Now, before I wrap this episode up, I have to tell you about one more book and I have not read it, but it came up, it kept popping up when I typed in my search for books set in Sweden. And I, I really want, it's going on my to be read list. It's, uh, the 100-Year-Old Man Who Climbed Out the Window and Disappeared by Jonas Jonasson. First of all, the name itself just jumped out at me. This uh, is the paperback version, September 11th, 2012. Hardcover was also 2012. That doesn't make sense. That must have just been that edition. So um, let me read you the description because I, I want to read it. It's a reluctant, a reluctant centurion, much like Forrest Gump, if Gump were an explosives expert with a fondness for vodka, decides it's not too late to start over. After a long and eventful life, Alan Carlson ends up in a nursing home, believing it to be his last stop. The only problem is that he's still in good health, and in one day, he turns 100. A big celebration is in the works, but Alan really isn't interested, and he'd like a bit more control over his vodka consumption, so he decides to escape. He climbs out the window in his slippers and embarks on a hilarious and entirely unexpected journey involving many, among other surprises, a suitcase stuffed with cash, some unpleasant criminals, a friendly hot dog stand operator, and an elephant, not to mention a death by elephant. It would be an adventure of a lifetime for anyone else, but Alan has a larger-than-life backstory. Not only has he witnessed some of the most important events of the 20th century, but he has actually played a key role in them. Starting out in munitions as a boy, he somehow finds himself involved in many of the key explosions of the 20th century and travels the world, sharing meals and more with everyone from Stalin, Churchill, and Truman to Mao, Franco, and de Gaulle. Quirky and utterly unique, the 100-year-old man who climbed out the window and disappeared has charmed readers across the world. It's going on my list. Now, I'm also curious, is, 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 is Alan a curmudgeon? Am I going to dislike him initially and then love him in the end? Am I going to dislike him initially and then learn to appreciate him in the end? Because the first three books set in Sweden or by Swedish authors that I talked about, I didn't particularly care for the main characters. <laughs> Pippi Longstocking made me uncomfortable. Elizabeth Sanders, morally ambiguous. Uva, cranky. So, um, I, I don't know. I seem to have, I seem to have issues, but this book sounds hilarious. If you've read it, I would love to know what you thought of it. Um, 
I am definitely going to put it on my to be read or to be listened to list and get to it eventually. <laughs> when I do, I will let you know what I thought of it. But in the meantime, if you have read it, I would love to hear what you think. It does have 4.3 out of 5 stars on Amazon and 4,469 reviews. So that's pretty good. Uh, 55% five star ratings on Amazon. So that is my Swedish themed episode for this week. I want to thank you again for joining me. I hope you will join me again on Thursday when I will be talking about books of some kind. I have some ideas as to where that episode's going, but they're not finalized. So I don't want to tell you something and then have you tune in on Thursday and it's wrong. So it'll be a surprise. Just tune in and, and find out. Thank you so much for joining me. I love you, my listeners. I really appreciate you and looking forward to spending some time with you again on Thursday. In the meantime, go out and get yourself lost in a good book. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.